Carolina, as much as we can be outside, especially with school starting back and there being a, a rise in uh, a few cases, you know, um, if, if we can be outside, uh, I, I, I'd like being outside. Uh, and hopefully, once I, I really think once we get through this phase, we're going to be okay. All right then. Brother Jim, let's sing something, my brother. Amen. 131. 131. I'm too near. How'd you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been hearing that one for almost 60 years, brother. Okay. Yes, we are. Thank you. 
<laughs> and the tenor and the bass. And uh, I can remember even back then, I didn't like to stay on one part. I, I like to play a little bit of all of it. You know, you yeah. get bored Amen. with one place. Amen. And I noticed here some time back, I was visiting one of those older churches, and people kept looking at me strange. <laughs> but with me, I say just grab a part and make a joyful noise Amen. unto the Lord. Amen. Let her pl fling her out there and let God work it all out. That's right. Amen. What we got now? The last verse. Amen, brother. Oh, the last. I may that you're holding the rain off, Lord God. And dear Father, Lord, would you take our worship this morning and glorify yourself, Lord God. Let it just be an echo from heaven. And dear Father, Lord, the word you say it was good to be with my people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, if it starts raining before we get out of here, we have a covered walkway over here that you can drive under and, and, and pick your spouse up. <laughs> While she waits under the oak tree, or he waits under the oak tree. Wait a minute. It's <laughs> not very gentleman like, is it? All right. Turn over to 216. Gee, that already. 216. Morning, Brother Morgan. And Sister Morgan. Don't learn to all be that. I was going to say, how's Morgan Hill, but how's Morgan Bottom? <laughs> <laughs> How's Morgan Creek? Morgan Creek. Amen. Yeah, you ought to be able to know something about that. Amen. I've been Amen. A lot. <laughs> a lot. That's your. That's your life. Traveling through. All right. On the first.
just curious how many people after I made the statement about the show The Chosen on VidAngel, did anybody go get VidAngel and watch it? No? Okay, just curious. I, I've just seen the people listen. What you got, Brother Jim? Last verse. Oh, I'm sorry. Keep cutting you off, don't I? That's all right. These songs seem extra long this morning. I don't know why. You got it granted. Yeah, we got... We're going to pick it up a little bit. That doesn't matter to me, no. We just stay where you're at. doesn't matter. <laughs> on the last. He... singing mood, we'll stay and sing till the rain hits. It's amazing we're not, here you go, Brian. It's amazing we are not sitting in the rain. I, I, I looked at the weather yesterday, got up and looked at it, and they, the weather said by 8 o'clock it'd be raining, and it was raining, and I got up, and then got, got a middle of the belt, and looked at the radar, and said, well, I think we can do it. We can do it. We can do it, man. We can do this like to be outside a little bit longer uh, see what's gonna happen with the school system and uh, go go from there <laughs> says you're not pushing 60 you're pushing 59 here I am pushing 60 
God's still letting me preach. Let me get around Brother Paul some. <laughs> God's still letting us have church. I got tickled Brother Larry Pittman owns Pittman Lumber Company down here. He's always real good to the church. Always, always real good to us. And um, he made a statement when when we started the church. He said, "I," he said, it, "He says it's been years since I've seen I've seen a group of young men work that hard together to do something for God." He told me the other day I went in. He said, "You know, I, I still say I." Man, that group of young men that y'all have up there at that church, I said, Larry, hang on a minute. <laughs> that was 27 years ago. That's a group of old men now. I said, we're, we're not in our 30s any longer. We're going to take our Bibles this morning. We're going to go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 33. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 33. Now, some of you have become very rude lately. You need to get unrude. That's right. Unrude. Rudeness is not niceness. There's a difference between rudeness and bluntness. There's a Bible verse that said, you know, you're to study to be quiet. Does anybody need to use that verse? No? All right, let's take our Bibles and go home. Amen. Okay. Well, I'm not preaching on that. Not now. Jesus was not rude. He was not unkind. But he was as blunt as blunt could be. Today, they would convict him of a hate crime. They would arrest him. He would be called rude, a homophobic, a transphobic. He would be called every kind of name in the book because he was against all of that. And you'll find where he spoke out against it on a continual basis. He was very loving and very forgiving. But at the same time, he, he was not overlooking of people's sins. Let me remind you of what he said to the, uh, to the adulterous woman that was caught. He, he by no means excused her adultery, but he did look to her and say, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. His call was to repentance so that your relationship with the Father could be right. For us that are born again believers, and you must be born again. For those of us that are born again believers, our, 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 our business in life is a business of repenting of sin. You see, you sin. God doesn't want you to sin, but you sin. The difference is, before you were born again, you sinned and you liked it. You still sin, but you don't like it. And you do what you can not to sin. You try not to talk ugly. You try not to be rude. You try not to hurt people's feelings. You try, you try not to do those wrong things. Here is the Lord Jesus, and and I assure you, the more I look at the Scriptures, the more Jesus changes. Now, let me, let me explain that to you. He doesn't actually change. But, do what, Brother Jim? He changes us, but my view of Him changes. Because the more I learn of Him, the more different, the more different He is than I realize. In other words, what I'm trying to get out is he's way more than I'll ever all the way know. He's more than that. 
we as at Grace Valley Baptist Church we 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 hold to the King James Bible we call it it is called the authorized version Bible we we hold to this version so strictly because that we believe that that God has inspired his word and promised to preserve it for all of time down to the very jot and tittle the very dot of the eye and the cross of the T that God has preserved his word if you could take this Bible and you could pull the letters out of it the exclamation marks the commas the periods the jot and the tittle you could throw them out there and they would have become a man Jesus said lo in the volume of the book is it written to me that man would be Jesus Christ you want to find out the heart of God you'll find it in this book not out there in nature you want to find the heart of God you'll find it in this book not out in the Gulf of Mexico you want to find the heart of God, you'll find it in this book. You'll, you'll find it in gatherings of his people. You won't find it in the workplace. You won't find it in your club. You won't, you won't find him in your lodge. You won't find him in your camp. You won't find him at the, at the, at the hunting club or, or the ballpark. You don't find him in this book. It is my goal and the goal of every Bible teacher and every preacher and every man that God has called and every woman that God has put in place to take him from the pages of this book and do our very best to show him to you and to lay him there where he goes in your heart. That, that is our job to get what him, what is written of him in this book the living word of God and put him in your heart now it takes the work of the Holy Spirit to do that but it also takes you opening up your heart which means that you will only know him you will only know him not about him knowing about him is different than knowing him you will only know him as far as you open your heart to him and when you open your heart to him, he begins to reveal himself to you on, on, on a different basis. And when I say that I see him different now than I did, it's because I know him more now than I did. I, I'm, I'm learning. This is a learning process. I am learning Christ. I'm of the opinion that in eternity we will still for every day be learning Christ our Lord his, his depth is, is, is too deep for a human mind his height in Matthew chapter 23 verse 33 one verse I'll read to you Lord let me get through before the rain hits would you Jesus looked at the Pharisees and he said ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can you escape the damnation of hell? And I began to look at Jesus through the word of God. I see him calling people names. You ever noticed how much of a name caller he was? He was a name caller. He called people things like this, walked up to him. This whole chapter, chapter 23, is about all the names Jesus called them. Listen to what he said to him. Now I looked at a group of them and he said, "Ye hypocrites, you stinking hypocrites!" And then he tells them what they're hypocritical about. You put on the clothes, but your attitude is bad. You're a hypocrite. You 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 come down here with your phylacteries, but on the inside you're as dead as they are. You're a hypocrite. You come in here walking and talking about me, but your heart is far from me. He's a, you're a hypocrite. That's what Jesus did. Let me ask you this morning. Can we pause here and just open our heart to God and let God say something to us? But what would God, the mighty King Jesus, what would he call you this morning if he came here? Woo! If he walked around and looked at you, 
What name would he call you? Would he look at you and see your heart and look at where your mouth was at during the week and look where you bad mouthed and you talked behind folks' backs and look how angry you was and bitter you was and, and how uh, monstrous that you was? And would he look at you and say, Thou hypocrite? Oh, wouldn't that be a horrible thing to have your Lord call you a hypocrite? And then I look at some others. He, he, he looked at them and he called some in this chapter. He said, You're like while it's sepulchers. In, in other words, you're a tomb is what you are. You're all white marble and clean on the outside, but on the inside is where it counts. And on the inside, you're full of dead flesh and dust and bones and, and decaying teeth. Why, you're nothing but dead on the inside and dried out full of every kind of putrefying problem there is. Can you imagine if the Lord told you you are a whited sepulcher? That would be a bad thing, would it not? I wonder what would the Lord call me this morning if he came here? Then I, I see him looking at them and he, he, he called them thieves. You're a bunch of thieves. You're a robber. He said, you're thieves and robbers. Looked at him, but he was name calling. Don't, don't think he wasn't bold. Don't think he wasn't brash, but he called it like it was. You're a thief and you're a robber. Oh, Brother Souls came here years ago, years ago. Preached just a revival and he preached on robbing God. I'll never forget it. He said, robbing God's an inside job. They said, God, how have we robbed thee? He said, you robbed me in tithes and offerings. It's an inside job. The people who are not the family of God can't rob God. They can't get on the inside to rob God. Yet he looked at these men because they were part of the Jewish kingdom. And he said, you're a bunch of robbers. Can you imagine God looking at you calling you a robber? And then I, I, I look and I, I, I see him calling them thieves. And then in this verse he calls them serpents. He tells them to go back and tell, you go back and you tell Herod, you tell him I said that fox, when he called Herod a fox, it was ugly. That meant he was subtle, he was demonic, he was sly, he was manipulating, that's what that meant. You go back and tell Herod I said he's a fox. That wasn't foxy. That was a fox. And then in this chapter, he called them serpents and vipers. Serpents. You're like Satan. I mean, he is looking at the most religious people of his day. Can you imagine Jesus calling you a serpent? You're a serpent. And, and then calling them a viper. Your generation of vipers. That wasn't just that they were a generation of vipers, poisonous snakes. He was talking about their mama. The generation, in other words, you, you're part of what came out of your mama. This is this, this, this viper. Uh, uh, her children hatched out inside of her. And he said, you come from something bad, but all before the rain hits, can I get to my point? Because she's coming. He looked at his disciples one day, and he said, oh, ye children. He called them children. You can run. Then he looked at them and he called them friends. You can still run. He looked at them and he said, Ye are the children of God. Can you imagine this morning the Lord Jesus looking at you and saying, Ye are the children of the Most High God. I don't know what he would call you this morning, but I'd sure like it for him to look at me and say, I've not called you servant. I've not called you a slave. But I have called you children. And then he said, I have called you friends. You're my friends. Oh my goodness. To have the Lord Jesus look at us and say that we're his friends. Hang with me here just one more second. God held it off. You know what a friend is? They're somebody who prays for you when you're down. You know what a friend is? They come for you when you got a flat tire. 